Hi everyone, it's Mike here. The sun is shining, the spring is in the air, and I'm feeling in a bit of a whimsical mood. Now, I don't often, in fact, I've never used a photograph of myself in an art journal page, but today I'm going to do just that. So today I'm going to be working in my 10 by 10 art journal, and I'm going to be working with this photograph. Now, this is a fairly famous photograph, but there's something missing from it. Um, I've actually photoshopped this to remove something from the photograph. Um, I know it sounds a bit strange, but you'll understand when I carry on with the, the actual page. Um, but I'm going to use this as the basis of my, um, of my page. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to measure it out using a pencil on... Uh, I'm going to position whereabouts I actually want it. I want it more over to that side because it's this particular area here where these trees are, this tree line that I actually want um, to have the most, but I want it to be about there. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut this out um, and then I'm going to probably um, tear about here and then I'm going to paint over to create more of a sky in there and then down here at the bottom I'll do the same thing again and I'm painting green down here just to blend that in a bit more around the sides. So I'm just going to mark my page roughly there and there and I'm going to bring my trimmer in and I'm going to cut this down and then I'm going to tear this and then I'm going to stick it down and that's going to be the base from where I'm going to begin from. Uh, I'll explain a bit later on why this picture with the bit missing is quite famous. Okay, I'll be back in a bit. Okay, so I've trimmed it and I've ripped it and I'm now just going to stick that down with a collage stick. So I'm just going to grab all that glue and then do it on the edges and then just wax it in the middle. Now the reason I'm using the collage stick rather than the Mod Podge is that I did a, an art journal class this weekend um, at the store and actually I ran out of Mod Podge and I'm not being able to get any more because I didn't want to steal any from the shop. Well, I knew what I was looking anyway. Right, so that is pretty much... Yeah, you can see I've made a, muck, a dirty mark on there, but that's fine because I'm going to be painting over that anyway. And I'm just going to rub those edges into the page. And I'll grab a wet wipe. This is quite good actually because I'm not, I don't normally do um, a talk through of a, an art journal page. So doing a mixture like this is actually quite new for me. There we are. The video might end up being a little bit longer than normal, but hey. You know, there are pluses and minuses. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to bring out some paint and then we're going to start blending this top and the bottom into the page so that it starts to disappear. Well, not starts to disappear, so you don't see the, the tears and the joins quite so obviously. So I'm gonna bring in some greens, a little bit of black, because it is quite dark, and also some blues with some white so that I can get a fairly decent match. But I'm not too particularly bothered if it means just bringing the paint in a little bit further, just to blend it even more. So I'll be right back when I've got my paint. Okay, so I've got some very inexpensive acrylic paint here. So this is from a British company called Dewcrafts or Design Objectives and this artiste is one of their brands. So I have a blue which is called Periwinkle, which is a nice light blue. I have a nice soft green and I have an off-white called Storm Cloud and I have a black. And I also have a deeper blue called Metallic. Oh, it's Metallic. I don't want that one. 
let's throw that one away and work with what we've got. And then I've, I've brought out my Dilutions Cut Grass Green because obviously that is a bit too light. So this might work a little bit better when I mix a little bit of the black into the page just to blend it a little bit more. So we're not going to use brushes. I'm going to be completely and utterly um, dirty and actually just use my fingers today. So I'm going to mix the paint on the page. I'm going to get a wee bit messy. So I'm going to pop a little bit of music on and you can watch me speed this up and you can watch me as I start playing and start blending that colour together on the page. I'll see you in a, in a little while. Okay, I'm happy with the top. That's blended pretty much what I wanted. I might just bring in a little bit more of that paint just into the tree line there. So I'm gonna go grab a very fine brush, uh, probably a bright, which is a square. And I'm just gonna take a little bit of that paint and just bring that a bit further in just to blend out that tree line a little bit more. So just to add a little bit into there, just to break it up. I don't want to go too mad. Now, what you are seeing on the screen might not be the exact same colors as what I'm seeing in front of me, because obviously it all depends on your computer monitor that you're watching it on. Um, or your TV screen or and also you know the lighting variations here in my room at the moment because I've got my curtains open as well as my big lights on so you know if the a cloud goes across the Sun there may like be a slight dip in color um, or not as the case maybe let's put a little bit of that blue back on there and what I'm doing is just taking a little bit of that bluish colour. I'm just trying to bring that in as much as I can just to try and blend out that tree line without going too mad. Just softens it a little bit. It's over this side a bit more than I need to work I think. A bit more blue in there. And this is quite a famous tree line. I will show you the original photograph, um, the one that I photoshopped, and you'll, you'll understand why. I think, actually, when that dries, that'll probably be about the same colour. Now, this periwinkle blue that I've got here is, is kind of a powdery blue, uh, almost like a cornflower blue. But like I say, depending on the way that your computer monitor or your TV screen displays these colours, it may not look exactly like that. You might get a better idea from the um, from the photographs at the end, because I will take some photos at the end. I've got some white up there as well, just to break out. There we go. Okay, I'm going to do the same thing for the bottom now. So I'm going to clear away this paint here and bring in the greens. So I will be right back when I'm ready to do the bottom. Okay, so I've already started just mixing on my craft mat here, just with my finger, and I know I'm almost, almost off, out of frame. And I do apologize for that, but it's a little bit unavoidable when you're tight for space. So I'm just going to bring, there we go, that's more like it. You can see a bit better now that I'm as you can see, I'm not being too particularly careful about the way the paint is going up 
into the image because it just helps to soften and blend that line, that real line, out a little bit. So um, I will bring in um, another piece of sponge that I've got here to soften and diffuse. Um, this is just really inexpensive. It's um, just a craft sponge that I picked up for very, 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 very little money. So I'll just bring a little bit more of that lighter colour in. So obviously I'm conscious I don't want it to dry totally on the page. So I'll bring a bit of that green in as well, just to get a nice bit of a mixture. I'm not too particularly bothered about getting it exact because when all said and done, it is an art journal page and you know you do have artistic license in what it is that you're actually doing so a bit more darker okay I think time to bring in our wet wipe first of all just to get some of that gunk off my fingers okay so bring in that sponge and just start diffusing out. I'm not too bothered about the bottom being um, too blurry if you like because I'm just going to bring up some of that green paint from the mat into the painting and just start to blur those edges sometimes when we do this kind of thing it looks like witchcraft but but I assure you it's not and try as we might we try and make it as easy to follow and recreate as we can so I'm hoping those colours you know, are a close match. On my computer monitor that I've got in front of me, um, that I use just to frame my shots in, it looks pretty much what it is. So I think I'm actually quite happy with the way that's blended. Okay, that's great. I'm happy with that. So I'm going to clear all this away, get rid of all that paint that's on my craft mat, and then I'll be right back and we can make a start on the next part of the journal page. Okay, so the page is now dry. Now I just wanted to point this line out where I tore the piece of paper. Now that disappears depending on the light that you're in and what angle you look at it. Now look, you can barely see it there. It's literally vanished and the same thing for the one at the bottom literally completely disappeared amongst all the paint which is a great technique to learn if you are not very good at drawing or painting and you want to incorporate images from a magazine you can literally stick them down and paint over and integrate those those images into your painting or into your page um, and, and kind of cheat except it's not cheating, it's a valid technique. So there you go. Right, on to my next bit. So uh, I've left space down here at the bottom for some text, uh, some writing, and I've also got uh, an image. Now this is where there's a little bit of a giveaway. Um, I'm gonna say giveaway as in as to what I'm going to be creating. Now, I've, because I've been playing about with Photoshop to remove items from the original photograph, I also then played around with creating an image to go on the page. So this is the image that we're going to use. Yes, me sitting in a cup and saucer. You'll, if you still don't get or still haven't clicked as to what I'm recreating here, then you will see it in a moment because I will show you the finished final piece. So I'm going to go and fussy cut this out. Uh, and I've already got all my quote letters that I've got here already separated and done 
um, ready to stick down on my page. So I will be back when I've finished cutting this little handsome chap out. There's my teacup and saucer, all fussy cut out. Now what I have done, because I've had two or three cups of coffee today, um, you know, and I'm getting on a bit, my hands do shake a little bit. So what I've done is I've actually gone round the edges of the um, cut with a distress marker, and I've just used black soot. Um, that's upside down, there you go. Distress marker, black soot. And I've just touched the felt tip or the brush end to the edges just to hide any white um, raw edges of the card or the paper that, that you can see. I'm going to use my collage glue stick, my Ranger collage glue stick, and I'm going to stick this down onto the page about there. So it's directly above this group of trees here. So that's what I'm going to do next. So just using the collage glue stick. I like this one because it, it is a triangular shape so it does allow you to get into corners if you're using, um, or if you've got square bits so you can get right into the edge without daubing too much on your worktop. And then we're going to place, I want to get so just above that bit of tree line there, just at a slight angle, and then I'm just going to drop that down. And that should glue nicely in place. Now I'm just going to get a piece of that sponge that hasn't got anything on it, and I'm just going to just rub it gently, just to make sure it's all stuck down. Perfect. I did say I was feeling in a whimsical mood. And this definitely is a tongue in cheek art journal page. Okay, and then the next thing is I need to glue down all of these letters. So I'm going to put you in fast forward, play some music, and you can see how all the letters get put down on the page. Okay, so I've laid out my letters. I haven't stuck any of them down yet. So I'm just going to use some craft glue and a fine tip applicator, or as fine as I've got anyway. I can't find my real fine ones. And just standard craft glue once I've cleared the nozzle. And I'm just going to stick those down. So nothing great um, technique-wise, just a basic gluing down. So I will, once I've got my glue to work, um, I'll be right back. God, I can't believe how difficult this is. You know, in this day and age, they supposedly can put a man on the moon. They can transplant limbs from one person to another to save people's lives. And can they invent a non-clogging glue nozzle? No. What's the world coming to? Yeah, I think that's it. Right. Hurrah! Okay, on with the show. Okay, so I've stuck all of my, no thanks to you glue, um, I've stuck all the letters down now. Now this is obviously going to take a while to dry. I'm not going to heat set this. Um, now I'm going to leave it for a couple of hours because that white glue that I stuck down will dry and disappear. It will go transparent. Um, so to make sure it's completely dry, 
then I'm going to leave it for a good couple of hours before I come back to it. And I'll see you when that happens. So it's been a couple of hours now and it's pretty much dry and as you can see the glue has all but disappeared and where it is left there's just maybe a slight sheen to the page but it's only just almost imperceptible so it's not really worth worrying about. So all I'm going to do now is just to border the page is I'm going to add some white paint just all the way around the edges here mostly to make it look as um, as rough and scrappy and painterly as the top and the bottom. So I'm just going to use that storm cloud again. I'm only going to use my finger like I've done previously. So I'm going to put a little bit of that paint on the page and then just using my finger I'm just going to add that just to the edges. And I'm just going to go a bit rough. I'm not really going to go um, really tidily. I'm just going to blend it in and then probably utilise a bit of that sponge just to kind of grunge it in and do that all the way around. Okay, I think I'm happy with that. It was more along the lines of getting something out of your system. You know when you have an image in your mind and you want to just work it through then that's exactly what this kind of page is. It's not necessarily the greatest artistic endeavour in the world but when you've got something, it's like an earworm, you know, when you've got a song in your head and you've got to listen to it before you can get rid of it. Well when you've got an idea in your head sometimes the best way to clear that idea out of the way to make room for others is to, is to actually put that idea down on paper, whether it turns out to be you know, a great piece of artwork or just something that makes you giggle, it's still you know, worthwhile sitting down and doing it. And like everything else, if you're not happy with it, you don't have to show anybody. So art journaling is all about satisfying your needs really, they're more than anybody else's. So that's it. I think all I'm gonna do is try and find my food well pen. Or actually, if I even find my, there it is, my signal white. It's always upside down, isn't it? The Uniball signal broad and white. I'm just going to sign and date it. So we're in March 16. Done. So this is my finished page. And for those that don't get it, then I feel that I need to add a little bit of an explanation as to what this page actually means. Now, the photograph that I showed you originally, and I'll put the original photograph on screen now. Okay, so the original photograph is by a gentleman called Billy Mayer, and it was taken in the 1970s. And as you can see, the original photograph has a UFO on it. So that's what you can see, that dot on the, the tree line, and I'll just zoom in slightly for you so you can see that a little bit closer. Um, that was the original photograph. Now this is one of those photos of a UFO that has never been found to have been faked. They don't know what it is in that photograph. They can find no tampering, no nothing in this photo that they can say makes it a fake photograph. So that's what makes this photograph kind of special. Um, the other one is, it's also, and I'll put this one on screen as well, that's the poster that was taken from this photograph that was used in the X-Files TV series. So this was the poster that was on the wall of Mulder's office for 10 years or so. So it's a very, very famous photo, a very, very famous poster, and I just had to get this one out of my head um, because it was in there. I don't know where it came from, it just came there. And um, let's just go back to my page. Um, and I just had to get and recreate that same photo, but this time make it a little bit more whimsical. Now, I think it's possible because I've just recently heard that they're bringing it back. They're bringing the X-Files back. So I just hope they don't drag it out for another 10 years. So that's the background to this page. Uh, a little bit of whimsy. I just had to get out of my system. And now it's done. So I can move on. Well, I hope you enjoyed that little art journal page. Uh, a little bit of fun, a little bit tongue in cheek, but nonetheless, still a great page to play around with. So I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed to my YouTube channel already, you can do so by clicking the button at the end of the video. That's all from me for now.
I will see you all again very soon. Bye for now.